Good morning, CSL Simi Valley community, all our friends, our visitors, wherever you are, welcome to our Virch, the intersection of church and the virtual world. So we call it Virch because we're smashing it together. Welcome to, oh my goodness, if you're not in Southern California, bless you, bless you. We are in the middle of a swelter wave. I don't even call it a heat wave. It's a swelter wave. It's already like 95 or something outside. It was 109 at 6 o'clock yesterday. Ah, whew. I digress. I'm, st- I'm not the weatherman, but I still feel like I got to talk about it. In fact, that's what we all talk about, right? It's like the first thing you say, hey, how's the day? Beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's particularly a beautiful day when you wake up with your mind stayed on spirit. That's why that's our theme song, to wake up every day with your mind stayed. In other words, concentrating, focused, a part of standing in the truth of who you are spirit manifest here on earth we've got an exciting uh, service for you today our guest artist is nikki star first time for us to have her with us and she's got mu- beautiful music and a great website nikkistar.com you can go check out her music after the service don't leave now uh, reverend patrick harbula is doing a guest talk in advance of his class it's coming up on tuesday to tell you a little bit about the journey of the soul and what that means to him so we'll talk about that later Also, it's the beginning of a new month, and that means we look back into August and talk about our volunteers. This month, the volunteers of the month, a little bit of a different set. Instead of one volunteer, we have several volunteers. At the here it is at the senior center, there is a uh, a group of folks that we call the panhandlers who go down to the senior center one day a week each and wash dishes for the seniors that have for the cooks that have been uh, working to keep our seniors happy and fulfilled and their tummies uh, feeling good so that is uh, this week we're or this month we're recognizing for their commitment to outstanding service for our community we're celebrating darlene and john bellis kathy burt julia felker d malore and yep, I get my hands in that too sometimes. Uh, and on, on Mondays, going out there with John and I, we do every other Monday's dishes at the Senior Center. That's the, those are the pots and pans that we stack up and have to go through. It's great. It's a wonderful way to be a part of our, our Southern California community, uh, our Simi Valley community, and to be a service to what I call the wisdom keepers. You're not old. You're wise. Wise beyond our years. Definitely. So we like to be of service to them. It's also a way that we can be uh, in service to our community and put our vision and our mission statement into action. Another thing we do is we get together in community and we're finding all kinds of ways to do that while we still remain in this COVID lockdown with uh, social distancing. We've got an event coming up on Sunday, on a Saturday. It's a silent movie, Safety Last, a movie by Harold Ford, Saturday at 7 p.m. And there's the, the ID information on that. But what I want to talk about right now is uh, introduce the man behind the idea. And to tell you a little more about it, here's John Newbill. Hi, it's John Newbill, and I'm here to invite you to our silent movie night on September 12th, Saturday at 7 p.m. We thought we would do a, a silent movie on Zoom because that way if people talk over it, it doesn't really matter. The movie we've chosen is called Safety Last, and this guy here over my shoulder is... Uh, Harold Lloyd, um, I don't know if you may have heard of him or not. He was an absolute amazing star in the silent era, but uh, didn't actually transition into, into talkies. But um, he did all his own stunts. It's, the movie is Safety Last, and it's absolutely incredible. I'm going to give you a little preview here. Here we go. So that was just a little, little uh, preview. The uh, Zoom idea, I'm going to give it to you here. It's 931-1937-7287. And the passcode is the, uh, the center's uh, street address, which is 1756. And um, they'll put it in the uh, comments down below so you 
don't have to remember everything I said. Hope to see you on Saturday, September 12th for a silent movie night. Bring your popcorn. Absolutely. Bring your popcorn. <laughs> That's so fun. So join us that for the silent movie night. Here is the information just one more time for you. And I'll also give it to you at the end of the service if you want to write it down. Or, you know, we give you a lot of numbers. We give you a lot of Zoom numbers during service. So it might be a good idea to come with a pin. And this is why we had this uh, this year the, the, um, the journal the spiritual journal, because you can also write down plenty of space to write down stuff. We still have these. If you didn't get one, um, we can send it to you. Uh, just write to the office or call Dr. Susan. She'll ship one right out to you right away so that you can have something to keep your notes during the Sunday service, the beautiful spiritual journal with great quotes all throughout. And yes, we're near the bottom end of the year, but that's okay. It doesn't mean you can't use it in the future, and it's great for taking notes. So take a look at that. So we've got the silent movie night. We do our service at the Panhandlers. You come here. We do our prayer work around things that are happening in our world today. And we do our action. We step. We treat and we move our feet. These are how we put our vision and our mission statement into action here at CSL Simi Valley. We have it. It's a longer mission statement than what we sell, tell you each Sunday. We read a, a, a digested version of it. If you'd like to read our full vision and mission statement with all the core principles that we adhere to at CSL Simi Valley, then just send a note over to the church office and we will send it out to you. We'll email it to you. In fact, maybe I'll email it out to everybody later this week because it's, it's a beautiful document that the entire church got together and, and spent time with... Uh, uh, Reverend Dorian, oh, look, I've already made her a reverend, with practitioner Dorian Lockhart when she was here, Kata Lockhart, when she was here, and they put this beautiful mission statement together for us, and we've been guided by it ever since, and here it is in short. It says, we're community, inclusive, loving, and authentic. We celebrate all paths to God in gratitude, empowering self and others. We serve compassionately through outreach, inspiration, and and education. That's who we are. That's why we're here. And here's what we do. Good morning and welcome to all of you joining our live Virch, a blend of virtual and church worship celebration. It's our pleasure to bring you this morning's announcements, sharing with you what we do. Thanks, dear. Reverend Patrick Harbula is debuting a brand new curriculum called Journey of the Soul. That begins Tuesday, September 8th at 6 p.m. The course runs for six weeks in a Zoom classroom. You'll hear more about the class and get a preview of its focus in a bit when Reverend Patrick shares today's talk entitled, can you guess? Yep, Journey of the Soul. To register for the class, again, beginning this Tuesday, go to bit.ly forward slash CSL class dash journey. Once you fill out the registration form, you'll receive a confirmation email with all the details for getting the class logistics, the class textbook called Magic of the Soul, and how to pledge your financial commitment for the course. This week's Wednesday night experience is called an abundance experience. I expand my capacity to accept my good. Please join Mary DiVincenzo for an evening of exploration celebrating the infinite abundance that is spirit. The evening will include sacred readings, a brief talk, and a guided group spiritual practice, opening you to a special inner experience of the infinite givingness of the universe. Practitioner for the evening is Reverend Jennifer Nigam. The Zoom meeting ID for an abundance experience is 865-0882-6793. And the passcode 887793. If you haven't had a chance to see these two, Mary and Renifer, Reverend Jennifer work together. You're in for a treat. Join them at 7 on Wednesday. Earlier in the evening at 5.30, join De Debbie Jarvis for yoga with Debbie. Debbie says this hour of spiritual yoga is for everyone. It's a workout for mind, body, and soul. Here's the Zoom information for yoga. The meeting ID is 878-5693-8671, and the passcode is 253932. 
On Saturday, September 12th, our men's group, the Giants, and women's group, the Sacred Sisters, will meet again over Zoom. The Giants get underway at 9 a.m. Their topic will be, get it off your chest, what's going on? Here's the Zoom address or meeting ID, 852-8380-5667. And the passcode is 463827. The Sacred Sisters will begin at 10.30. This, month, this month's meeting, themed nurturing and honoring ourselves, asks the question, what new way can I care for myself today? Join the conversation in the Zoom room. That meeting ID is 908-747-6278. School's back in session, and so too is Dr. Susan with her special video segments called Play and Learn with Dr. Susan. She records three Play and Learn lessons each week. You'll find them posted to our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley. Dr. Susan also streams live on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. through the CSL CME website. Practicing Oneness at One is back. Reverend Stephen uh, is conducting that. Started again in September. Please join Reverend Stephen uh, every Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock on his Facebook page. Tune in for inspiration and support, some musings and some ramblings, which all mean tangents too. Yeah, tangents every weekday afternoon. Facebook friends can adjust their settings to receive a reminder if you want to catch it live. Not a friend yet? Um, send Reverend Steve a request. Remember, our center's practitioners and ministers are providing emotional and spiritual support during these challenging times. Reach out to them for prayer or any questions. Visit the center's website, click on About Us for a pull-down menu, and scroll to Our Practitioners. You can also call the office to leave your prayer request. And today's Verge service will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley, for friends who missed this live broadcast. The service will also be available later this week on the homepage of our website. A few of us get together after the service on Zoom to check in, catch up, and share this morning's talk. We call it Opre Birch. All are welcome. A link to Opre Birch will be posted in the chat window near the end of service this morning. Now get ready for Sherry Deeds to sing one of our community songs. While she's performing for you, we invite you to look for the share arrow, invite a friend, family member, or other loved one to join us. It's a simple way to stay together while we're apart. Welcome to all of you viewing from wherever you are. We're so grateful that you've chosen to spend time with us this morning. And now, now here's, here's Sherry. Sherry. Good morning, everyone. 
It's so good to be with you this morning. I'm going to read the affirmation, and then I'm going to ask you to read it with me. As I practice resisting nothing and embracing everything through non-attachment, my life flows effortlessly with peace, love, and abundance. As I practice resisting nothing and embracing everything through non-attachment, my life flows effortlessly with peace, love, and abundance. My story this morning is entitled, Relaxed Miniature Horse. Magic is a pint-sized black horse with a white stripe down its nose. It was part of the gentle carousel miniature therapy horse team. She's a hero, well-trained, and experienced in attending events and large crowds. I'd written about magic in one of my books, and we were together along with her handler at Barnes & Noble during a book signing. Magic stood on her mat patiently, greeting people, accepting pets and hugs. One person approached and said, oh my heavens, she looks like she's depressed. The handler smiled. Actually, when you see the signs that she's relaxed, her head is down, her eyes are closed, her hind leg is slightly bent. She feels comfortable in her environment. She went on to explain about the horse's body language. This made me examine my body language. I noticed that my shoulders were tight, my hands were clenched, my body reflected the anxiety I was feeling. I'd been worried about today. What if the event doesn't succeed? Are people going to show up? Will they have a good time? Would I do a good job? I look, took a deep breath and reminded myself in whose hands this event rested. I blew up my breath, releasing the tension. Clearly, our bodies and our minds are connected. When we focus on stress and worry, it manifests in our bodies. But when we set our mind on God, our bodies are relaxed and comfortable. I took a look at magic, the star of the event, and followed her sweet example. So let's do a treatment. Take a deep breath oh, and let it go and any tension that may be in your body. This is what I know. God is everywhere present in and through everything, in and through my life and all, everywhere. There is absolutely no stress or worry. For I put myself in the hands of God. I let the tension flow out of me. Any worries dissolve. Anything that I need to take care of, I do now. For I'm guided totally and completely. We know the service helps in every way possible. We are open to receive the message. And we use what we possibly can and then move forward from there. We grow and evolve right here from this point forward. And we release all of anything that is no longer serving us. This is a great day and we step into it with open mind, open heart. I'm grateful for our message today, for all the ministers and practitioners that uplift us with their prayer every day. I'm grateful for the opportunities in my life to grow and evolve 
I let go right here and right now and release these words into the law of mind, knowing before they're said, they're done. And together we say, and so it is. Namaste. Good morning, CSL Simi Valley. Nikki Starr here. So humbled to be able to share my music with you this morning. It's a beautiful day. I hope you have a wonderful day. And my wish for you is to find some peace and some joy in your hearts today and to have fun. So thank you so much for listening. I'm so happy to be here. Hope you have a great day.
something someone can hold on to. And something someone can relate to. And even if it's just an out of one million, you understand your mind. It was worth your precious It's that time during the service for our GAP, God Awareness Place. It's three minutes of silence, giving you a chance to just open your mind, come into this moment, and relax. I'll keep the time. You just relax and breathe. That's all you need to do. Well, I don't know about you, but that felt good to me. Just take another deep breath. Oh, and let it go. Namaste. Everybody gather around the fire and sing our favorite songs and share our stories become 
closer, closer is where we belong. Is anybody listening? Does anybody hear what I say? Is my body dreaming? We can mend what ties we break. I believe we can turn this world with open minds and willing hearts, saying, I will reach for the all inside of me. Yeah. Now, now. It's time we stop being. Together, like the sun and the moon, together is where we belong. Oh, oh, I believe we can turn this world around. I believe we can mend what ties we break. I believe we can turn this world. Welcome today's guest speaker, Reverend Patrick Harbula, and his topic today, Journey of the Soul. Hello, my beloved CSL Simi Valley community. So good to be with you today, uh, even if virtually, I do miss you all, And but we're doing virch, and virch is good, um, as we'll talk about later in the talk. Um, having virch is no better than having church. So, um, so here's how I want to start off this 
the talk, and that is, is there something wrong with me? So I'll let you be the judge. Of course, I don't ultimately believe there is, but sometimes uh, I feel a little out of sorts or disconnected just because I am not feeling a lot of distress uh, given the situation in our world with the pandemic and with uh, all that's happening. And so why is that? You know, I have to say that, you know, we're not being challenged financially right now. In fact, our finances have never been better. Um, they've actually increased during this pandemic for various reasons that I won't go into. <clears throat> so, you know, the question is, in our teaching, that would be mental equivalent, that uh, that my consciousness, and I'll tell you, that's that's how it works for me. When things challenge me, financially, then I look for, well, how can I do something differently? And that just uh, creativ creatively brings me into a new space or new awareness. So, uh, and a new way of being and a new way of working, a new way of offering my services. And so, uh, so far that has served me well over the last several years. Um, but that does not necessarily mean that if one is and, and by the way, in that, and part of the out of sortness is that I feel extreme compassion for those who are challenged. And I know what that, that's like, right? I mean, it wasn't long ago, 15 years ago, probably, where I was close to $100,000 in debt. And, and I will say at that time that I felt more prosperous during that time, as I was building my business, and I never saw it as debt, by the way. I saw it as an investment in my business, an investment in my family. And so the money that I was borrowing uh, was an investment, not a, not a debt. And, <clears throat> and, so, um, and at that time, I felt that I had a higher level of prosperity consciousness than I did when I was making six-figure income at Sage Publications uh, just a few years before. And so <clears throat> my point is that when if, if one is not experiencing a high level of prosperity or the appearance of prosperity, then it does not necessarily mean that one has a, a low prosperity consciousness. In fact, this is how I like to see it is when things are going well financially or relationship wise or health wise then it is a direct correspondence to my my consciousness if things are not going well financially relationship wise health wise then it's simply an opportunity for me to test my consciousness because the true test of prosperity consciousness is not feeling prosperous when it looks like there's a lot of money available. The true test of prosperity consciousness is when I can feel prosperous when it looks like there isn't a lot of money. The true test of, of health consciousness is when I can feel healthy even when, when my body looks like it's breaking down. When I can feel loving even when my relationship is being challenged. And so, <clears throat> you know, the uh, uh, many of you have heard me say this before, and you'll hear me say it again, that the only way to true peace is through the practice of non-attachment. And, you know, our teaching is so good at intentionality, these spiritual mind treatment and affirmation and all the ways in which we create a clarity about what we want to create in our lives. Those are all powerful and good things. But as I write in The Magic of the Soul, the most powerful consciousness for manifestation is being really clear about what we want, speaking it into the universe, even demanding it from the universe if you want to go that far. Um, and at the same time, and this is a pretty large dichotomy, at the same time being uh, at least relatively non-attached to how, when, or if what I want occurs. Because as long as there's some degree of attachment, there's going to be some fear that what I want to happen doesn't happen, or what I don't want to happen will happen. As long as there's fear, I'm putting negative energy into what I don't want. <clears throat> and so, 
the true, the only way to true peace is through non-attachment. You know, as Robert Scheinfeld, one of my favorite books, favorite book after The Magic of the Soul, it, uh, Busting Loose in the Money Game, it's not about money, it's about consciousness. Uh, my favorite quote from the book is, when I, when you finally get to a place in consciousness where you realize it's no better to have a million dollars than it is to owe a million dollars, then you will have the consciousness to create whatever you want with a snap of your fingers. You know, when I say that, uh, I get a lot of nods, like we get that, even though it doesn't sound practical, even though if all of a sudden everything I own were gone and I owed a million dollars, I wouldn't be happy <laughs> for a few moments, but my practice is non-attachment. And so I know that in a very short order, I would get to a place of peace and I would start looking at the positive. And what is all the, what's the opportunity here? Here is the opportunity to expand my, my prosperity consciousness in a way that I have, uh, I have never before. And I would start looking at how do I start over? How, what's the most creative thing I can do to turn this around? Um, so it's no better to have a million dollars than to owe a million dollars. It's no better to have my dream relationship or to be in no relationship. It's no better to, um, to, to have a perfectly healthy body than it is to get coronavirus. And so I have no fear about getting coronavirus. Um, somebody was at our sweat lodge 14 days ago and the next day came down with symptoms and we're doing, you know, social distancing as, as much as we can while doing a sweat lodge. Um, and we're limiting it to 10 people instead of the 30 people we usually have. Um, and so, you know, he didn't contract it at the sweat lodge because he had symptoms the next day, but he may have shared it. And I was feeling like really low energy just in the last week. And I thought, ah, maybe these are symptoms coming on. And I had no angst. I had no, no worry. Worry does not help us at all in any way. You know, fear is okay. And I want to talk about uh, embracing our uncomfortable emotions in a few moments. Um, but I'm at complete peace because I would actually, now this might sound crazy to some of you, but I would actually love to get coronavirus in order to Exp have that experience to actually experience how well my body does with that. And I am an at-risk person. I, by diagnosis, ha by diagnosis, have uh, emphysema. I've had asthma and a uh, genetic lung disease, disease called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency uh, my whole life. Um, it doesn't affect me. I still uh, play tennis. I run. I do all these things. And I believe that, that my, um, even though my lung function is at, you know, um, officially 55% of, uh, of what's normal, uh, because I am as, as physically active as, active as I am, I believe that I would do as well. And I could outrun some people who have a hundred percent lung function that, but aren't as active as me. Um, and so it's no better to get the most awesome gift in the world than it is to get a really lousy or what we might judge as a lousy gift. And so um, there is a story about uh, the, this um, Buddhist child who is having a birthday. And so the Buddhist master comes to him and brings him a gift. And the child says, well, where is it? And he says, well, I'm giving you nothing wrapped in emptiness. And the child looks at him and says, Master, um, that's very thoughtless of you to give me a gift like this. And so the master says, very simply, thank you. And the child says, you're welcome. I meant it as a compliment. And so, uh, and so how do we get to a place of non-attachment? So the way that this has evolved for me is practicing what I write about in The Magic of the Soul. Um, what is now termed the journey of the soul for our, the new curriculum. I've just redone the curriculum for Centers for Spiritual Living. Um, and the, the title of the curriculum is the journey of the soul. 
And so, <clears throat> you know, the journey of the soul, um, simply stated, and I'm going to talk more about other ways to, to view this, but the most important way is the journey of the soul to me is a journey of expanding love, of love expanding more love. That's what we are here to do. And so, you know, in The Magic of the Soul, the book I wrote 20 years ago, it's been a curriculum for uh, first Religious Science International and then CSL for the last 17 years or so. Um, and now, as I said, the curriculum is be being uh, revised and it's and it's now becoming, it's going to be a core, um, a core class, a core course for Centers for Spiritual Living. The practice in it, the most important practice is looking for the magic in every experience. Looking, and there's many synonymous phrasings to that, looking for the opportunity for growth, looking for the beauty in everything, looking for uh, the greater freedom, joy, or love that wants to evolve from any situation, especially the most challenging situations. And I've, as I have practiced this um, over the years, for the last 20 years, and become better and better at it, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer, my first thought was something good will come out of this. This will be a healing journey. And not to say there wasn't fear some of the, at some of the time. You know, I was, I was told by several doctors, this is not the kind of cancer that you live with. This is the can, can, kind of cancer you die from if you don't do something about it. And still, I went two years um, healing it holistically before I went and had the surgery that was recommended. And, um, and so I was, I was, I would say in fear, 3% of the time, 97% of the time, as a result of practicing, looking for the magic in every experience, I was in this energy, in this understanding that, and the experience that this is a, uh, an adventure in healing. And so, um, you know, it's no better. I'm going to really uh, push the envelope here by saying it's no better to be dead than it is to be alive. And being dead simply means graduating, as my first teacher talked, to, talked about it, that death is simply a graduation into a higher experience of who we really are, a deeper experience of who we really are. And so, <clears throat> you know, this journey, another way to say what the journey of the soul is, is the journey of non-attachment. That every time that I am challenged physically, relationship-wise, health-wise, prosperity-wise, the, the better I get at looking for the magic in every experience, the better I get at seeing it as an opportunity rather than as something negative, the more non-attached I become to outcomes. Because the more I practice it and realize, oh, I've got cancer, this is a good thing, then I have less and less attachment to being in a healthy body. Um, of course, my intention is to be as healthy as possible. And my activity in my life is geared toward that. But when it's challenged, I recognize this as an opportunity actually to get even healthier in consciousness. And so if I do this non-attachment game, everything for me is a game, as if you know me well, you know that. You know that I play with everything. I, I no longer do work. Everything I do on a daily basis is all about play. And that could not happen if I was not relatively non-attached. That is the secret. And, and so if I do this, if I play this game well of non-attachment, this journey of the soul, this journey of non-attachment, then when I come to the end or near the end of my life, as I'm in my deathbed, if I'm fortunate enough to die of natural causes, then that experience, the last experience that I have being in physical form, I am quite certain will be a beautiful one. Hmm. Let's stop and just take a deep breath for a moment into the freedom and peace that can come by non-attachment.
Hmm, doesn't that feel good? And so let's talk about uncomfortable feelings because in this, you know, um, as I say, the more non-attached I become, the less uncomfortable feelings I have, the, the less fear. I mean, I'm, I'm relatively fearless as a result of this practice. And yet if fear does come, I don't resist. I'm not attached to being non-attached. I say that all the time, right? Encourage you to not be attached to being non-attached. And so what this means is, is when I have uncomfortable feelings, pain, loss, fear, this is a good thing as well. What is the magic in my fear? It is my sensitivity. It is my vulnerability. It is my, my openness. When I simply, when I simply embrace the fear. And what about my pain? What I find in my deepest pain is always my deepest love and compassion. And so if I'm resisting any of these feelings, then that's just another attachment, right? And when I am willing to dive deep into whatever uncomfortable feelings I have, then, then those feelings tend to dissolve and now I become more non-attached. Uh, a client of mine just today, or on the day that I'm recording this talk, um, was sharing that I'm, I'm and, and this has been a, a, a repeating theme for him, that I find myself comparing myself to other people. I find myself comparing myself to who I really want to be. And so, you know, I said, what, what would it be like to accept yourself unconditionally while you are comparing yourself, right? And in our final prayer, I said, imagine what, what I am certain of is that as you accept yourself while comparing yourself to others, as you love yourself unconditionally while comparing yourself, what I am certain will happen is that there will no longer be, at least in those moments that you're loving yourself while comparing, there will no longer be a need for comparison. One of my favorite, uh, my favorite um, quotes is uh, from Carl Rogers, the founder of humanist, humanist psychology, who said, the curious paradox is when I accept myself exactly as I am, only then can I change. You know, it is a curious paradox because what we tend to think, the, um, you know, the path of least resistance or the, you know, the mindset that we tend to have is if I'm going to get better at something, I have to change. I have to, have to work at it. I have to work really hard at it. But the curious paradox is that the real simple solution to changing and growing and expanding more, the answer is always love. When I love myself unconditionally, exactly as I am, then the change that I wish to see occurs naturally, easily, effortlessly. And that's what I find about manifestation, is the more non-attached I am to any outcome in life, the more what I want happens easily and effortlessly without working out at it, without trying. Uh, it is, if I had more time to talk today, I would give you countless examples of how opportunities come into my life, how prosperity comes into my life, how my my love my 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 uh, love life with my beloved just had our 18th anniversary two two days ago, um, and I woke up this morning say, said said um, happy anniversary uh, in two days, <laughs> and our 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 love just uh, it's unbelievable. I, I said in my Facebook post the other day I never could have believed that. Uh, a love this pure, this this beautiful, this this complete, it was even possible. And it's not to say we don't have challenges and sometimes and disagreements and sometimes even uh, I don't know what do I call them fights? Not really, um, but uh, disconnects. Um, but you know, I, I I embrace those as well. You know, I mean, it's it's cliche to say that. You know, we can't experience joy unless we experience its opposite. I can't experience pure love unless I experience the opposite of that, those disconnects. 
And so I'm content within those disconnects. Maybe not at the very beginning of them. Maybe I resist them. Maybe I get uh, some pissed offficity, as Reverend Ke uh, Dr. Ken Jordan calls it, 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 at the beginning of a disconnect. But I very quickly, as a result of my practice, get get to a place of embracing this as well. You know, so yesterday I went for a run. And this may um, seem like a bizarre entrance into a metaphor, but I see a, a bird, uh, a, a crow, flying right across my running path, and it's crapping as it goes. And of course, the obvious uh, understanding that came from that instantly was the beauty and the majesty in all of creation. <laughs> You get that, right? You get the metaphysical significance in that. <clears throat> I'm not sure how, how that spurred that inspiration, but but really I think it was it was already, you know, ready to come in. And, and I was just I was thinking, okay, the bird craps, the crap becomes uh becomes manure for for plants to grow. How you know, and what I started thinking about is, you know, of all the planets and stars and meteors and everything that's out there in the infinite universe there must be life somewhere else but we don't know of it yet we have we have not experienced you know at least it's not i mean there, there is some evidence right um but i'm not going to go off on that tangent if i was uh reverend steve rambo i might but i'm not going to <laughs> so uh, but uh but we we know that there's life on this planet and we look around and the multiplicity of it. I'm looking out my window and seeing um, too many different kinds of trees and plants and flowers to even count them right now. And the multiplicity of animals and and life force and 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 uh, kinds of of species that I'll never even see or meet and that are microscopic, including co coronavirus. That here I am in a, in the midst of a p pandemic. And and at the same time, and I can I can feel sorrow, and I can embrace that sorrow for all the people who are suffering through this. And at the same time, it's not an either or; it's a both and. I can be in supreme gratitude for being alive on this planet at this time. You know, uh, if I was born on another planet, I wouldn't. I, I would be I would be grateful to to be alive and have a pandemic to live through, right? And I know, and you know, because you're metaphysicians, that we'll come through this stronger and better at a higher level of love and compassion than ever before. It might not look that way right now, but I am guaranteeing you, and I don't make guarantees that often, that when we come through this, that we are going to be at a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of non-attachment, a higher level of gratitude, and a higher level of peace. Because we will, we will have gotten through this together. So, um, I was going to tell. I think I will tell you this quick story about um, my teacher Vivian King, who I'm going to, and I'll give you the short version. Who was hit by a drunk driver, um, became a quadriplegic. And by the right, by the way, that reminds me of Dan Gilbert has a a, a TED talk called uh, The Science of Happiness, where he, he starts the talk by saying, uh, simple question, would you rather be, uh, win, win the, a lottery, uh, the lottery of $20 million or become a paraplegic, uh, a quadriplegic? And the answer is probably pretty obvious. And he said, well, would it surprise you to know that in the research we've done, 10 years after a person becomes a quadriplegic, they're no less happy than they were 10 years before. In most cases, people who win the lottery 10 years later are no more happy than they were uh, 10 years prior to winning the, the lottery. And so, which simply proves that happiness, joy is an inside out game. It's not an outside. It's we think that I'll be happy when this thing happens. It's always an inside game. When I feel joy and love and freedom inside, then I attract more of that. Then my life simply falls, all of the elements of my life fall into alignment with that inner experience. You know that. I'm here to remind us of it. We're reminding each other of this. 
My teacher, Vivian King, became a quadriplegic. Um, the, shortly before she, she, she passed on, um, she lived for a couple of years after that. And she said to me <clears throat> um, at one point, you know, was, I, I'm, I can no long, I'm a teacher who can no longer teach. I'm a writer who can no, no longer write. Because um, she couldn't speak either. She could speak in whispers. She was brain, uh, brainstem damage that led to uh, her paralysis and not, a, not able to use her vocal cords. But she was able to speak in whispers and I could understand her. She said, as long as I have a physical body, I can remain a presence of peace and light and love in this world. And so if someone who has lost virtually everything can have that attitude, then I can be at peace within a pandemic. And so can you, my friend. And, and if you are, and again, if you are feeling any discomfort, any uncomfortable emotion, simply love yourself unconditionally. I was talking to a client of mine a while back and, and the phrasing came to me that when I love myself unconditionally, what I come to, what I ultimately realize is that I am not myself. I am in fact the self. I am in fact pure love. That is the journey of the soul. I was going to talk so much more about the class coming up, but you can find out about that in the announcements. It's going to be, uh, I'm so excited about it because the, the new curriculum I've created includes not only everything from the magic of the soul, but everything I've learned since then in the last 17 years and have been integrating in classes. So um, I hope that, and, and Zoom classes are, are amazing. If you haven't done one yet, um, they are loads of fun. Some of my students have said, I like them even more than being in person because it's even more in intimate. When someone's talking, um, they're right there in front of me instead of the back of the classroom. So I'd love for you to join me on this journey of the, of the soul. And, uh, and if not, if you're, if you're doing other things, then I know you're in your right place and let's connect one way or another. I love you. Um, you are love. And we are loved together and we are a strong community that will get through this together. Thank you. Love you all. And uh, we'll see you soon.
As a friend of mine once told me, I say some of my best stuff when I'm muted. <laughs> I see we had no sound on all that wonderful prayer. I'm going to go back into the prayer, back into that moment. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. Can't hear you, can't hear you, can't hear you. But you can hear me now. Uh, let's do the commercial. Can you hear me now? <laughs> so let me start back with saying thank you, Reverend Patrick. Really appreciate your talk. It was wonderful. We'll do a recap on that in a moment. But now this is our time, as I showed you a minute ago, our time for the healing prayer, the healing prayer moment, this moment where we allow ourselves to take in a deep breath of the divine. Join me now as I, I'm going to take a second breath after that long breath of silence there. <laughs> We had two gap meditations today. One where it was just me bat, 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 gapping away without you being able to hear the gapping. But you can hear the gapping now, and it's God speaking, and it's the divine speaking by means of me and through you. That's what's happening in this moment. So let's let it be. Let's just breathe in that divine energy and recognize and know that there is one power and one presence that is God itself, that is the life being made manifest by each and every one of us. And by this understanding, by that depth of the breath, we expand ourselves into an understanding that there is only this one and we are all a part of it. So wherever we look in, the, in, our, in our experience of life, wherever we see lack or limitation, wherever we see uh, an appearance of unhealthiness, wherever we see discord showing up in the world, we know that through the power of our mind and the immutable law that we can change that activity by our actions. We treat and then we move our feet. We simply do it from that place that Patrick reminded us of, of non-attachment. Why non-attachment? Because we know there is a law that is immutable, spiritual laws that are immutable that work. So we do not have to worry or concern ourselves with the how. We simply know that it is. And through our isness, through our acceptance, and through our faith, we bring health. We bring harmony. We bring wholeness. We bring resolution of challenges. We bring peace and joy and the expression of love by our beingness. Through our vibrational energy, we send out waves of vibrational change because we are change agents. And as we do that, we bring the truth of the expansion of life into experience. We bring wholeness, we bring health, we bring harmony, we bring joy from our hearts into action in the world. And so it is. <sighs> well, glad I got that back for you. It's just the way it works, right? Sometimes you're on and sometimes you're unmuted. Just that simple. Oh, boy. You know what? I'm going to go to Nikki Starr and bring some more music to you because we've got this great music. And here is Nikki Starr. Here we go. Sounding down the chambers of a wind tunnel. Surround me and take me. Take me over. Jenny now. See me rise from the ground. Hear my voice out loud. My mind separate the colors of the world Destiny slips into reverie Boy and girl Do you realize, do you understand You two can make a difference In the summer land Sound it down the chambers of a wind tunnel Surround me and take me Take me over Gently now See me rise from the ground, hear my voice out loud. It's echoing the sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. Echoing, echoing. With your heart and soul, introduce your life. Bring it to the world and shake a big vibe.
Good morning. My name is Lillian Bird Golombeski, and it is my joy and honor to be with you today to speak to you about the gift of tithing. I think tithing is an interesting journey, and it's multi-leveled. I had the opportunity to revisit Edwina Gaines' book, The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of those four laws. The first one is tithing and giving. If you're too broke to tithe, you will probably always be broke. Hmm. Two, setting clear-cut goals. She suggests that we go on a 21-day diet from anger, gossip, cheating, and hostility. Number three, forgiveness and worthiness. You must forgive yourself for everything you've ever done and forgive others for all that they may have done to you. Number four, finding your divine purpose. Find your own unique strengths and direction in life. Whoa, <laughs> those are some pretty tall orders. <laughs> but we can do it. Practice makes perfect. Each day we get better. I invite you to think about what your beautiful spiritual family provides you. Maybe expand your giving. Just a little here, a little there. I also drew a card from my Course in Miracles box of cards. And there are no accidents. The card I drew is, the cost of giving is receiving. Let's expand to receive more. Thank you for letting me be here today. Namaste. Thank you, Lillian. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. This is this contemplating abundance that we're doing is for us to simply think about how abundance inflows in our lives and how it expands in our lives. And we'll be doing these every week with either a quote or uh, a, a talk from one of our members who is uh, sharing these are talks that are being generated with uh, Reverend Johanna having conversations with different members of the community. So I want to thank her for that and thank all of you for participating and also for your gift and your giving for keeping our center active, alive and preparing us for when we get to go back so that when we come back, you'll see an amazing space when we come back. So there's some great things coming up for us. This is the time when we do our giving uh, pledge. And <clears throat> this pledge is for each and every one of us. It's not just for the center. There's a line in there that says, for CSL Simi Valley. That is for you. If you're watching this, we consider you a part of CSL Simi Valley. So join me now as we say this pledge together. Divine love is doing its perfect work here and now. Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for CSL Simi Valley. Now, divine love is victorious. Oh, I want to thank everyone that has contributed to this center, that has gone through this offering. Oh, we are so blessed, and I know 
that we are not supported completely and totally, that we have prosperity and abundance, and that goes for everyone that's online today and everyone in the universe. I extend this opportunity to open to the wonderful, wonderful abundance of the universe. So let's know the truth together, shall we? Take a deep breath and let it go. There is one, one God, one mind, one divine intelligence moving in and through each and every one of us. We are abundant and prosperous in so many ways. The center is supported completely and totally, and we grow and evolve. We let everything else move forward, and we just follow direction. God leads us totally and completely right here and right now. With gratitude for everyone in the center, with gratitude for everyone. Sending love to the universe right here and right now. Knowing that we grow and that we get better everywhere. Thank you, God. I'm grateful for this opportunity, grateful for all of the abundance that we have. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Maggie. <clears throat> This is me, a little frog in my throat here. All right, so uh, just want to do a little quick uh, thank you for for Brad and Lynn for the announcements for today, for John Newbill for setting up the silent movie that's coming up on Friday. Oh, there it is, the silent movie. Maybe you need to. There's the information about it again. And uh, I saw the quote in here, the, the comment about creating a space on our website for all of our Zoom addresses. We're going to work on that. That's a really smart one. Who came up with that? Oh, yeah, T. Michael Rambo. Hmm, all righty. So we'll definitely uh, make that happen for you. But there's, that's for that event. I um, want to thank our guest musical artist today, Nikki Starr. Was she fantastic? Oh, my God. Sherry, thank you for bringing these great musicians to us. Sherry Deeds, our music director, in charge of all of that. Patrick, for our, our guest speaking. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Lillian Golombeski, thank you for your contemplating abundance today. And uh, Maggie, for all of your practitioner services for today as well. Later, we'll see Jamie and Gary. And just want to quickly, as Patrick was talking about in his Journey to the Soul talk, he says that, that that resistance, resistance is a form of attachment. We should be not attached to attachment. That's a journey for you, right? When we can accept ourselves as we are, as we can accept ourselves as we are, that's when change can happen. The simple solution for changing is loving ourselves, loving ourselves as we are. And look for the opportunity in every experience from that place of non-attachment. The journey of the soul is a journey of expanding love. The journey of the soul is a journey of non-attachment. He's got a class coming up to talk more about that. That's over the next six weeks, starting on Tuesday. You can register for the class going to bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash clash dash journey. When you register for the class, you'll get an email telling you all about the activities that take place Wednesday night. I want to tell you about that one. We've got the abundance experience with uh, Mary DiVincenzo and Reverend Jennifer, Jennifer. So come on out for that on Saturday night at 7. And again, on Friday, we've got the silent movie. And then after service, after service, we'll be doing op reverge so come on over for op reverge i'll put the link for that into the chat window right after that okay interesting that i had the sound gap today earlier i was thinking um maybe you don't see i'm gonna look here let me just show you the setup i put an extra camera on today for some reason this is see i'm over here this is it. This is the setup, and I can. This is very interesting because what I can do here is I can adjust everything there, so I can change. This is how the the service is happening, and I can actually zoom in so you can see. Here we go. I'm gonna zoom right in here. Oops, not not too far. Come back just a little bit, and then I can refocus. And so this is right here. This is showing you all the elements that are within the broadcast. And so sometimes some of the things are recorded, like Nikki's music. So when that's happening, what I need to do so we don't have feedback. Sounding down the chambers of a wind tunnel, surround me and take me, take me I over. I think this whole time I, my mic might have been off again. Let me go back. See me rise from the I think 
I think this whole time my mic might have been off again. Maybe not. Uh, you know, there's because this is what happens. There's so many. I'm pushing all these buttons, you see, and sliding these things around. And so sometimes that that's that's how this shows up. And this is how we get the show on for you, the, the service on for you. So you know, in the middle of that, there might be a snafu here or there, but it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying putting this uh, studio together for you, so that we can have our church service as close to what we have in the sanctuary as possible with all the elements and all the slides and all the music and the gap meditation and the practitioner prayer and the talk itself and the the statements that we share together and this switcher program allows us to do that and allows me to do it right here from my little mini office at home here so that i can come and be with you each and every sunday and on those sundays when reverend johanna is here she can join us and we can be right here and from our home to your home so that our church reaches you in the Virch world. So thanks for being a part of that. Let's close with our closing benediction. And here it is. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Hey, Simi Valley, we're grateful that you're here. This is from Floyd Lula. We love you. Here we go. Two, three, four. In the name of love, with a heart of grace, overflow in us and decorate this place. As it is below, so it is above. May we always stand in the name of love. When the veil is gone, there's only one of us, only one. In the name of love, when the day is done, we will sing this song all as one. In the name of love In the name of love May we always be Seeking out the best Till we all are free Living in a world We've been dreaming of where we stand as one in the name of love when the veil is gone there's only one of us only one in the name of love when the day is done we will sing this song all as one in the name of love in the name
Peace and blessings. <laughs> we love you.